I'm going to be using my phone for other stuff. Ivy, you excited? The game, not what's the definition. She's not closing it. Vocabulary words. Um, 
Right. After this, you're going to go into hospitality for lunch. So I appreciate you being patient. Hopefully, we'll get started soon. But after this, head out to hospitality and you come back after they leave and grab your belongings. Uh, and we'll dismiss everybody as soon as we have your picture. Okay. All right. Sounds good. see the kid very very thrilled to have you all um coming up we have our director of our talent and you all see questions we'll be first starting with two questions and then i'll ask you all to quietly raise your hands if you would like to say after the press conference we'll wrap and we'll be taking a, a small group photo all right so we have director joe cornish Plastic ones, uh, but they were heavy plastic ones, and then uh, there were shorter ones, so there were different shapes and sizes. But we didn't actually fight with the metal ones, we fought with the plastic ones, but they were heavy. Yeah, so what we would do is we'd, um, we'd have the metal ones to fill the way, and then it would swap out for a plastic one before the scene, and then we'd use those for the scene. Okay. Somebody, somebody hurt themselves with a sword, right? Yeah. <laughs> Do Tell them what happened with that sword. Well, uh, we were doing a scene getting ready to have a, have a short scene, and then all of a sudden, he goes, Guys, guys, just like, it's just his foot. His toe. Oh, yeah. He rested the sword on his toe, <laughs> he did. and it went through his shoe. It was only a little cut. Yeah, it? yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't too bad. You've got to be careful with swords, <laughs> don't use plastic ones. <laughs> So what was the hardest part about playing um, tough characters? Rihanna, you're the toughest yeah. in the film, yeah. right? I'm the toughest in the film. Thank you, Joe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think in terms of playing K personally, I didn't want to be too strong all the time. K is a really tough character and I'm really happy with the way I've portrayed her, the way Joe has written her, she's, she's, yeah, she's very, very strong and inspiring. But she also has this underlying sense of vulnerability about her and sensitivity. And I think that's really important as a female to 
be able to have that softness about you, but also that tough, strong character that you want young girls such as yourself to aspire to be like. Next question. Hi, um, I'm doing all of you right now. Um, so 40 years ago, you were in a movie about King Arthur. How does it feel to come full circle and play Merlin in this? Did you say, did you say 40 years ago? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I remember it very well. It was actually in 1980. So that was... Uh, Acting and performing was very different for me in those days. And uh, Excalibur was the first big movie that I had ever been in. Um, and I didn't have a great deal to do. I think I enjoyed two things about that movie very much. Well, one was the fighting, because we worked with the director, and of course, we were all, you know, clumsy adults, and uh, he loved us to improvise. And so it, what he enjoyed was when the rehearsed portion of the fight that we had practiced, practiced had been reached, he would yell out, don't stop, don't stop, keep going, keep going. So a lot of the fighting was actually real fighting. Oh, um, somebody got an arrow in their leg. <laughs> when he insisted that a certain sequence continue on after we'd completed the rehearsed little bit. Um, and I loved the dancing. Do you remember there was a dancer? Um, well, you better watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. What advice would you, what advice would you give someone if someone was bullied? Well, I think, first of all, if your friends stick up, well, like Alex, he sticks up for bullies, but um, if you don't, if you're being bullied, but you don't really have any friends, I'd tell a teacher, alert your family, like, you know, speak to someone and, and don't suffer in silence. I'd say that, like, I'm quite old, and, the, well, that's not the answer to the question, but, <laughs> but the bullies won't do well. It's the it's it's the people that are bullied that you that get on in life, and bullies have usually got some sort of problem with their own lives, maybe. But I think that's very excellent advice from Louis. Yeah, yeah I'm going to say as someone who played a bully, I agree with what Joe was saying. You'll normally find that the bully is going through something themselves, probably, and they're just deflecting that pain onto you. So you are being bullied, I mean, try not to take it to heart, but you do need to report it to a parent or a teacher. And, and um, yeah, that is, you said, don't suffer in silence. I was a bully. Um, I've actually <laughs> never spoken about this, separate, but I was. Um, and I came from a background where my home life wasn't particularly safe. Um, I don't need to say any more than that. And so the example that I was being given was a very bad one. And um, I look back on what I did at that time, and I'm ashamed of what I did. But I felt that in some way I had to make myself feel important and um, the only way that I could do that was to control other children. Um, and it's, uh, it, it, I cannot make my family responsible for what I was and who I was, but it was an element and um, I deeply regret it now and it's part of one of the reasons why I have become an activist and the whole is violence when people living together are cruel to one another or harmful. Um, it's for me it's uh, a way of apologizing for what I did when I was a kid. 
Yeah, I mean, no, Mom, I everyone it. knows the sort of legend that whoever pulls the sword out of the stone um, becomes the next king. But I, I mean, it's sort of, I think it's a tale that sort of is not remembered as one of the greatest. But I think certainly now, like with this film, it sort of brought it back into the perspective of things. But yeah, and like, preparing for, for this, I read the books and researched it. Um, I was always a big fan of The Sword in the Stone, the Disney cartoon. So that was, it was cool for me to be a part of this, but because this is a different adaptation, in terms of preparing for my character, I did have to kind of separate myself from the original and put my mindset into what Joe was thinking of inventing. But it did help that I knew the original story, you know, Arthur in legend. Did any part, what part wanted you to, what part in the scene wanted you to be? In the script. Yeah. Script. Yeah. They didn't, they didn't, they were desperate to make the movie. They were auditioning. <laughs> and I was deciding who would get to make the movie. That's my answer. Maybe you weren't asking me. <laughs> you know, well, when I got the script and I, after I'd done one audition, I read the script, I realised what a great part it was and how well great it was. So I was Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> well written. Not well written. <laughs> I, um, the time that Joe sent me the script, I was not feeling too good about things. And it wasn't even too good about things is that two other actors who I've known all my career, which is getting on for 60 years now, and uh, <laughs> um, and it seemed to me that all of my friends and, and my colleagues were playing the movies. <laughs> and uh, uh, one of them was Cynthia McCallum, who is a dear and very, very close friend. And, and there was a time when I actually said to him, hey, Ian, you've done so many of these movies, would you just mind suggesting my name sometime <laughs> I would maybe take over from you? And then there's Michael Gambon, uh, who played wizard in, um, in the Harry Potter. Uh, that initially was my first excitement, was to play a wizard after all. <laughs> Put my name on the wizard list. Um, for me, like Joe said, we didn't get the script during the audition process, so there wasn't necessarily a scene that made me want to do the film, because, um, yeah, I was trying to impress, so I didn't really <laughs> I didn't get that opportunity to choose. But when we did finally get the script, um, just the whole thing in general, the, the tale of the... Um, a boy who goes from being almost nothing to a king. I like that. I like that story. And just the fact that it was a modern adaptation and the medieval period just dumped into the modern world. I thought that was really cool. Hi, I'm West with the Case Access Preston on an assignment from Mommy Poppins. So, um, in your your round table. Well, I'll, I'll start to answer that to give you some thinking time. <laughs> In my kingdom, my round table would have these people, my cards, because they're a lovely bunch. There's some who aren't here, Hang Merlin, Dean Shamu, who played Bedders. But we saw thousands of young actors from all over Britain, and some of them have had a little bit of experience in movies before. Like Sir Patrick's had a little bit, <laughs> <laughs> Louis had a little bit, he's in Mowgli and uh, Alice in Wonderland and stuff. Rihanna has been in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory on the West End stage and in Bugsy Malone on the West End stage. Who had done nothing, he'd never done anything before, and he found a piece of paper on the floor at his school 
for the audition. He wasn't given the piece of paper. And he picked it up and went, hey, miss, I want to I want to go to this audition. And ended up in the movie. So our movie has a round table of very different levels of experience, very different people from different walks of life. And it was, for me, a wonderfully balanced, meritocratic, I'm going to use a long word, meaning everybody got there because of their own ability, not because of anything else. So for me, that was the perfect round table. I agree with Joe, and um, we all worked really well. <laughs> was your question, who would we have around our round table? Because we were king after that. Uh, a lot of them would be sports and women. Um, uh, one of the most important things I ever heard Billie Jean King, who is an American tennis player, um, Billie Jean Moffat, she became known as, and she's, uh, she's done a great deal of work for liberating uh, women in the professional tennis world. But she once gave an interview and she said, um, for me, the secret of playing tennis well is believing that there is only ever one point that you're playing. You've never played any points before and there are no points coming up in your future. This is the only one you will ever play. And if you convert the remark into what it means to be an actor, that that moment that you happen to be in, whether it's film or theater, television, that it is always the only moment and there won't be any others like it. And it's, it's a way of clearing your mind of a lot of, of baggage. Uh, that you don't really need. And, uh, so I would choose her for my round table. Um, and then it would be another female sports person. Um, there is a woman none of you will have heard of, I think. I don't know, maybe you will, Joe. Um, called um, Anne. <laughs> 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 he, just, he just got kicked off. Oh. <laughs> Phones are off at the round table. That's $10 <laughs> per phone uh, It used to be. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this round was called Ann Packer. And Tokyo, um, she managed to get into the 400 meters final. And nobody believed it was possible because she had no high standing reputation. But everybody knew that. Was so excited that she was in the final, and that was enough for all of us. And uh, there is a wonderful tape of the 400 meters, and and you hear the voice of the commentator open up. One ball, he said, "Oh, Ann Packer's falling behind. She's falling behind." You know, this is 400 meters is just one round of track. And then, as they're approaching the corner, you just hear a to different tone in the commentator's voice, and he says, "And Ann Packer's coming again." And she ran this huge corner. She went to the outside of all the runners in front of her and ran past them. And when she hit the home straight, she was in the lead with, with Americans and East Germans and Russians all behind her. And she had never done anything like that in her life before. And it's not over there because when she'd gone through the tech and she, it, she knew she won an Olympic gold medal, she didn't stop running. She ran all the way down the straight and then she veered off to where the spectators were and she ran into the arms of a man who was standing there, also in attic gear, and it was her husband. <laughs> and she finished the race by... So she'd be at my round table. So it's a weird round table, it's us. <laughs> and you sports women. And we're running the world, so things are, things are weird in the world. There you go. Mm -hmm. Very good question. Thank you. What's the most difficult to film and act in for you guys? Um, I'd say some of the sword fighting scenes, uh, like especially in, a, in that point where I'm fighting a bully, I'd say that was probably for me the most challenging because you have to keep up your energy levels and you've got to also act and you've got to be careful with the swords. And it was, it was hard but fun to maintain that. Mm -hmm. 
didn't you? Yeah, mine's the same as Louis. That um, that late scene is a really intense scene compared to the rest of the film. Intense in terms of the emotion. So, yeah, just to bring their energy level down, but still keep it high enough to be able to act to that emotional capacity was quite difficult. But we all kept each other going, and I think it turned out really good. Well, I'd like to contradict what they said because when we we built this pool to be a lake. So we built a big fake lake in the studio and it was full of chlorine to keep everybody safe. I got terrible chlorine burns all over my face no, and body. No. These kids were like Sunday afternoon at the local pool. <laughs> Literally like little dolphins bopping in and out. So I don't know what all this, it was hard work. It was hard work for me to stop you splashing around. So, yeah. I found the... Uh, I found it very difficult to learn the hand movements um, oh, yeah. because they had to be exact and there was one sequence in particular where I had to copy something that we had already seen Angus do, the, the young Berlin. That was challenging and the other thing was catching a coffee cup in my hand. There was a sequence where everything was going crazy and suddenly there's a coffee cup in the cherry aid. It's a cherry aid. Um, that wasn't a special effect. Somebody was standing out of shot above me, dropping it, and I and I had to catch it, and I missed it every single until what, what probably Joe thought was going to be the last one, and then we'd do something else different, and I caught it. And that's the shot. It's in the Good question. Thank you. So, what were what were some of your most fond memories or most exciting moments on the set? I'm gonna I'm gonna start this one off. I think my the most thrilling or exciting scene that we shot was um, in Morgana's cavern because I think that was the first time we were on strings uh, for yeah. when we get we each get pulled up. Um, yeah, we were on a harness and we were on strings, and that was really, that was really exciting and cool. And the whole set was like pitch black, so we could barely see anything. Um, and yeah, it was just cool. Adrenaline was pumping, and it was something that staying alive. So that was cool. I took we were on the round table, and uh, what I remember was I think we all just couldn't stop laughing because she kept doing these funny voices and. Distracting us from our work, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes when, when, when the actor's not there, I have to play their part behind the camera, and I'm not very good, so that went a bit wrong. <laughs> For me, um, it was being on the set in front of the camera with uh, these two actors and, uh, and, and the other two, and the actors. Um, with uh, young actors, and it was exhilarating and reassuring to find what a great experience that really was. Every every night, my wife would say to me, "I, I want to hear more stories about what they did today. What did they do this?" Time? I was excited mm -hmm. about the the excitement that I was experiencing. So, thank you. No. <laughs> All right, last question. I think it's going to be one, two more. So it's the last right there. What was your favorite part of um, the movie? I'm going to start that. My favorite part is the big battle at the end because it's a fantasy I had in my head when I wrote it when I was 12, or I thought of this idea when I was 12 years old, and that was a fantasy I had because I lived next to a big school. And I fantasized there would be this massive battle with undead knights and all the kids ganging up into an army and fighting them. So a few years later, I'm now in my late 20s. <laughs> Why is that funny? So, no, but like many years later, I have to make that become real was very, very exciting. And that kind of stuff is really fun to shoot. Battles, sword fights, people jumping around, zombie knights being exploded. <laughs> um, that was a wishful film for me. Yeah, but like when we were doing the sword fighting uh, against the trees, <clears throat> and, we're, and we're sort of being taught how to how sword fight, that was a very fun and hard sequence. But 
Yeah, so I think my favourite part has to be the, uh, the car chase scene because that was, it was a cool scene anyway. When I read it, I was, yeah, I was really excited. And then the actual filming process was cool. Um, we were in the studio, we were on a platform and the shell of the car that you see in the film is what we were strapped into, surrounded by green screens. So we had to use a lot of our imaginations. And um, Joe did a really good job at building the atmosphere and building like, the scene around us. And yeah, it was just really cool, really fun. We had a great time. All right. Ask question. Remember the class question? How long did it take you to film? How long did it take us to film the whole movie? So lots of weeks. <laughs> you lose track of time when you're doing it. How many weeks was it? That's our producer, Myra Park, trying to hide by the door. <laughs> was, it, was it like 10, 17 weeks, 10 weeks, 15 weeks or something? It's difficult when you've got kids because the laws are very strict. You can, if you're under 16, you can only be on camera for a very short amount of time. And your day has to finish at 6. You can't do overtime. So you have to, and when you're doing action, you do it in tiny little bits. You build up hundreds of tiny little bits. But we loved it because we were together and we were having a great time. So I think we would have been fine if it had been even longer. Right? 16 weeks. But you know, this film really is for, for all, all you kids out there. We made it for you and everyone who's come along to ask us questions. And to and thank you for doing that. And we made it to inspire you to be kings in your own, own world or queens in your, queens. In, in your own world. <laughs> King could be a non, uh, it could be a sort of non-binary word. Yeah. The girl could be a king as well. Queens. <laughs> and, and also that I thought that this idea is So if you're here for a movie or something you want to do in life, this is proof that you can do it. And if you sort of cling on to those ideas and don't let go, keep positive, you can achieve anything. But thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.